I like being at an institution that really encourages not just administrators, but particularly administrators to think beyond how do I get through this week, this month, this year, and to ask those bigger questions. My guess is that once our ninth graders are engaged in JTERM, they may tell us what it stands for. They're very good at coming up with uh, what acronyms mean. Uh, but initially it stood for J for January, and that's because you, you can have a May term, you can have a summer term. The idea is it's a moment in the school year where we're going to pause our regular way of doing school and do school really differently. Business as usual will come to a halt for the ninth grade and rather than going to 50 minutes of English and 50 minutes of Algebra 2, they will be engaged in a eight-day open-ended project-based learning service-oriented landscape. I think what excites me most in education is the sense of incredible possibility. Maybe never before in human history have we seen the potential for so much radical change. Our curriculum and our programming is mature enough now, after three years, that we're ready to start taking it into settings that it hasn't been before. For example, online settings. We have a great public speaking curriculum that we've been developing for the last three years. It's now ready to go into an online platform so that it's accessible to more students, more teachers in more settings and for more opportunities. Innovation really is an order of magnitude better than what we currently have. It's more than just a little push forward. Uh, that you, It's a giant leap. Um, it's a big shift, and that's uncomfortable, and I think it should be. So the Design Lab is exciting because it's both a physical space and a curricular space. So we're going to have um, a Fab Lab facility, and we're going to have courses that run out of that space and in other parts of the school. A couple of the big pieces we're going to focus on in Design Lab is really experiential learning, uh, real-world problem solving, and the idea that you're doing something more than just doing a project for the sake of doing a project, that there's some element of public purpose in there, that you're making someone's life better or you're accomplishing a goal for somebody else and kind of sharing in that community. I spend my time thinking about how students use technology because we know that they use it, they feel comfortable, they're engaged with it uh, without us doing much. but. If you look to see what they're actually doing, they're doing things like social media. It's, it's their social life digitized. Um, but I'm not quite sure that they know how to use the devices for learning. So I think that it connects into our mission because what we want to do is teach students how to use their technology to learn, to access the information that's out there and available. We really want to do a tech Sabbath and what that actually means is that we're going to try as a community to not use our computers for a day. The, the good things, the things that you miss, the things that allow you to be more productive, um, the ways that you can access a wealth of information um, are going to be taken away from you for a short period of time. And you're going to realize those and say, whoa, that, that's why I have the technology. It's not to distract me. It's not to just fulfill this you know, view of myself on social media. It's, it's there for a reason, and I'm not going to take that for granted tomorrow. It's all about creating young people who are curious about the world. They're curious about people who are not like themselves, and they want to learn more. I think that building an inclusive community kind of happens in two parts. Um, one part is really about celebrating the unique differences and the unique characteristics that each of us brings to our community here. The second part though is about making space and making an opportunity for every person in our community to feel heard, to feel respected, to feel valued, um, so that they all have a seat at the table. And I think that we need both of those things. We need to both celebrate and we need to um, make sure that everyone's got a voice.